it's remember this is the guy we're talking about the destruction of the spirit of the people of southern louisiana and mississippi may end up being the most tragic loss of all george bush doesn't care about black people please call <laughs> and i love chris tucker look at her out like what just happened what just happened now the reason that i show this is to remember that the entire left thought this was great the entire left thought that Kanye West was a hero. Kanye West was another one of their cultural heroes, which showed a couple of things. One, look, Kanye was always a weird dude. Okay, Kanye was always a nut job. And Kanye, back in 2005, you know, being a nut job, the left embraced his nut jobbery because obviously his nut jobbery cut in their favor. Second of all, there is this monolithic culture on the left that feels that all celebrities must be on the left. If you are not on the left and you are a celebrity, you get raked through the coals. We, we talked about this earlier this week with regard to Shania Twain, who is a Canadian country singer who was forced to recant when she said that she might have voted for Donald Trump. She can't even vote. She's Canadian. She was forced to recant all of that. Well, now Kanye West has uh, has decided that it's time to break the thought monopoly. So there's two things here. One is a serious topic and one is a not so serious topic. The not so serious topic is the sheer hilarity of Kanye West becoming friends with Donald Trump and the left panicking. So the left is absolutely panicking. They're panicking because, again, they have this monolithic hold on the culture. Now, out here in Los Angeles, there's something called Friends of Abe. Okay, It's the super secret Hollywood group that everybody knows about since it was on the front page of the New York Times. Okay, that super secret Hollywood group has thousands of members, all conservatives, who have had to hide the fact that they are conservatives for years in Hollywood for fear of being fired. There's this groupthink that prevails in the music industry. Uh, there's a groupthink that prevails in identity politics. And Kanye West is in, at the intersection. Uh, there's that leftist word intersection is the intersectionality of race and the leftist politics of Hollywood. So he's a Hollywood star, right? He's obviously a major music presence. Uh, and also he happens to be a black guy, which means that he has to be of the left, because if you are a black guy and you're not of the left, according to the left, you're no longer a legitimately black human being. If you're Clarence Thomas, you're not black. If you're Condi Rice, you're not black. You've gone to the quote unquote sunken place. Right? And this is the language that folks were using about Kanye West yesterday. And that was a reference to the movie Get Out by Jordan Peele, which is all about how black people who interact with white culture end up being essentially drowned by white culture uh, in their own psyche. It's, I thought the movie's deeply racist, but in any case, the, the left really believes this, right? The left believes that if you're a Republican and you're black, you're not legitimately black. They believe if you're in Hollywood and you're a Republican that you shouldn't be in Hollywood. They're fascistic in their group think. And Kanye West broke that yesterday. In this sense, it's actually what he did was kind of important. In the other sense, which is just watching the left lose their minds over the fact that a crazy guy says some stuff about Trump, that's pretty astonishing in and of itself. So we have to go through the entire story because it's just too glorious not to. So yesterday, Kanye West begins tweeting. And he's been back on Twitter because in about three weeks, he drops a new album with apparently a guest track with Tommy Lahren, uh, which will be incredible. But here, here is, here's Kanye West. He tweets out, quote, I no longer have a manager. I can't be managed. <laughs> just pretty spectacular. And then he continues tweeting. I love the way Candace Owens thinks. Now, Candace Owens, for folks who don't know, uh, works for Turning Point USA, a great organization with whom I work. I speak at their, their leadership conferences a fair bit. And Candace is black. Uh, Candace is their communications director. And she speaks out routinely about why she thinks that the perception of victimization by black Americans is damaging and counterproductive. So Kanye endorses Candace Owens. And everybody on the left loses their minds. This is crazy. How could Kanye endorse Candace Owens? He's going to the sunken place. He's going to the sunken place. But it doesn't stop there. Kanye continues. He says, you don't have to argue with Trump, but the mob can't make me not love him. We are both dragon energy. He is my brother. I love everyone. I don't agree with everything anyone does. That's what makes us individuals. And we have the right to independent thought. There's so many great things about this tweet. I, I will, like, it'll, it'll take me an hour just to break down the beauty of this tweet. It's like a Robert Frost poem. But you begin with the fact that they are both dragon energy. I don't even know what that means, but it sounds awesome. I don't know they're playing Dungeons and Dragons, whether they watch Game of Thrones together. I don't know that they both ingested coke. I don't know. OK, we both did their dragon energy. So we know their dragon energy also. But what he says here that you don't have to agree with any, anything anyone does because you're individuals and you have a right to independent thought. This broke the Internet yesterday. The left lost their mind. How could Kanye West say that you have a right to independent thought and then say that he likes Trump, which actually is an element of independent thought? So Kanye says, listen, I can think for myself. And the entire left said, shut up. You're not allowed to think for yourself. You're not even legitimately black. I'm going to get to the left's response to Kanye in just a second. But we have to go through Kanye's fulsome thoughts. I mean, his, his brilliant, his brilliant spurts of idea making. Here, more Kanye West. He says, if your friend jumps off the bridge, you don't have to do the same. Ye being ye is a fight for you to be you. 
Ye, by the way, is a Yeezus because he made a, an album called Yeezus. So ye being ye is a fight for you to be you. I didn't think he was actually using like old British grammar. Now, for people in my life, the idea of Trump is pretty much a 50-50 split. But I don't tell a Hillary supporter not to support Hillary. I love Hillary, too. He loves everybody. Okay, he just loves everybody. By the way, his wife, Kim Kardashian, raised money for Hillary Clinton. And both of them raised money for Barack Obama as well. Barack Obama, by the way, once called, the ones called Kanye uh, a jackass publicly, which is which is pretty spectacular. We'll play here. Here's what Barack Obama once said of Kanye West. The young lady seems like a perfectly nice person. She's getting her award. What's he doing Why would up he there? Do that? He's a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. This all this stuff. A rare point of agreement between myself and Barack Obama, but uh, it is amusing to watch as as Kanye actually destroys the left's perception of pop culture dominance. Uh, so back to Kanye's tweets. So Kanye continues tweeting, my wife just called me and she wanted me to make this clear to everyone. I don't agree with everything Trump does. I don't agree 100% with anyone but myself. And it didn't stop there, right? This, this, this just continued. Then he tweeted out a picture of himself in a Make America Great Again hat, giving the Donald Trump okay salute. And it says, we got love, which is just amazing. It's just amazing. And, and people, people's heads were exploding online last night. I mean, just exploding. The entire left was losing their mind. Again, we're going to get to the left's reaction to this because it's hysterically funny. Okay, and then it didn't even stop there. Right? Kanye continues tweeting. He then tweets out, my MAGA hat is signed. And then he shows that Donald Trump has signed his MAGA hat and he, uh, with, with a bunch of flame emojis, which is really spectacular. Okay, there are two more Kanye tweets. And then we'll get to some responses. So Kanye continues, right? This thing is all day long. He tweets out a video of Scott Adams. So Scott Adams, of course, is a big Trump supporter and the creator of Dilbert, the cartoon Dilbert. And Kanye is now tweeting out Scott Adams' videos about why Kanye is breaking the culture. It's just amazing. There's something big happening. And I think a framework to see this big happening stuff is that people are breaking out of what I call their their mental prisons. The people are realizing that there were things that used to um, to hold us back, that used to limit what we could do and you know what our danger was and what our opportunity was. It's so funny. Come on, he's tweeting out Scott Adams videos. It's amazing. Okay, then finally he finishes with this one. Uh, Kanye tweets out, Obama was in office for eight years and nothing in Chicago changed. Boom, mic drop, unbelievable revenge, right? So I love the fact that Obama called Kanye jackass and Kanye said, listen, Obama was the president for eight years and things still suck for black people. Well, slow clap for Kanye West right there. Slow clap. So I've spent my entire career saying that I hate rap and I don't think that rap is a real form of music. And I think that a lot of the cultural values pushed by rap are garbage. WTF, OMG, I love rap now. Okay, I'm, I'm there. What can I say? And then what's amazing is before we get to Kim Kardashian's responses to all of this, which were just as amazing as Kanye, Chance the Rapper, who you may not have heard of, but your kids certainly have. Okay, Chance the Rapper tweets this out. Black people don't have to be Democrats. <laughs> Heads exploding all over America. People, Democrats at the DNC headquarters running and crying and sobbing to themselves because here is the truth. Black people don't have to be Democrats. Now, a fascinating statistic from a guy named Harry Enton, uh, who used to work over at 538. Uh, he may still work over at 538, actually. Uh, but Harry tweeted out this, quote, per the 2016 census, OK, only 8 percent of black voters went for Trump. But among black men earning at least one hundred thousand dollars a year, it was 15 percent. So Kanye isn't completely alone. In other words, what Kanye is doing right now might not actually be as stupid and not important as I'm as I'm mocking it for being. And in just a second, I'm going to explain why it might actually be important, why it might actually be important. And then we'll get to Kim Kardashian's response and Trump's response, because it's just fantastic. The reason that Kanye's tweet storm might actually matter, the reason that Chance the Rapper saying this might actually matter is because if Republicans were able to win 15 percent of the black vote, again, black people who made over one hundred thousand dollars a year in the in the year before the election, 15% of them voted for Trump. If Republicans won 15% of the black vote, they would never lose another election. Really, they would never lose an election in the United States again. Okay, the fact that the Democrats have been winning elections for so long is almost entirely dependent on the solidarity of the black vote that goes 90 to 90% to, 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 black, to, uh, to Democratic candidates. And there's something happening. I think there is a ground shift that is beginning to happen. Uh, there, there's something called preference falsification. 
Okay, it's, it's a term that was put forth by a social scientist named Timur Kuran in his book, Private Truth, Public Lies. Uh, this was uh, pointed out to me yesterday by Eric Weinstein, uh, who's one of the most brilliant people in, in American public life, MIT PhD in astrophysics, I believe. I mean, he's just, he's a pretty amazing guy. But he pointed out this, this idea, preference falsification. So preference falsification is this idea that the stuff you say publicly is very much peer approved that what you feel privately may not be the stuff that you say publicly. That if you, you may back Trump, but you're not going to say to a pollster that you back Trump, in other words. And what happens is that as soon as a crack in the, in the wall appears, as soon as somebody says, well, my secret preference is actually my public preference, and your secret preference is also the same as their secret preference, you might say, well, now, now the door is open. Now I can say what I really feel. And there is this feeling among a lot of conservatives that perhaps there are going to be a lot more minority folks who say, listen, I don't want to be boxed into this idea that because I'm black or because I'm Hispanic or because I'm Asian or gay or a woman that I have to vote Democrat. You know, I'm an independent person with independent thoughts. And if Kanye can say it, hell, I mean, if Kanye can say it, then why can't I say that? Right? Maybe meritocracy isn't the end of the world. Maybe a meritocracy is a good thing. You all know why black folks over $100,000 are voting Republican in larger numbers than folks who are under $100,000? I would imagine it has very little to do with tax policy and a lot to do with the feeling that perhaps it's okay to vote for the perpetuation of a meritocratic system. That we live in an, in an area where if you work hard, you still can get ahead. Kanye is a very wealthy man, and he does actually work hard. Right? There are a lot of black folks in this country who work intensely hard and make a lot of money because of that. And maybe they're beginning to look at the system that's been pushed by the Democrats and say, well, you know, I'm going to give this a second look. I'm going to think a second time about this. And if Kanye can say it, then why the hell shouldn't I say it? Why is that so terrible? You know, that's why I mean, this could actually be an important cultural moment. Because that, and also because the left stranglehold on culture, maybe that's beginning to loosen a little bit. Maybe cultural figures are beginning to realize, hey, why exactly do we have to be monolithically Democrat? Why can't we actually have a different set of thoughts once in a while? Okay, so all of this results in reaction from a bunch of different people. We begin with the reaction from Kim Kardashian. So Kim has a choice, right? Kim Kardashian is, of course, Kanye West's wife. And she has a choice. Either she can say, oh, God, Kanye's at it again. Shut up, dear. Or she can defend him. And Kim Kardashian comes out and defends him. So I love that our cultural heroes are now Kim Kardashian. Let me make one thing clear from the outset here. I don't think Kim Kardashian is a cultural hero. I think she's done a lot to, to make our culture more degraded. I don't think Kanye West is a cultural hero. I think he's done a lot to make our culture more degraded. But the fact that they are fighting back against the hegemony of a, of a fascistic thought policing from the left, that is a good thing. I don't have to like their work to understand what they're doing is actually... Not a bad thing and has some cultural Im impact and importance. Kim Kardashian says, to the media trying to demonize my husband, let me just say this. Your commentary on Kanye being erratic and his tweets being disturbing is actually scary. So quick to label him as having mental health issues for just being himself when he has always been expressive is not fair. Right? This is the point that I was making yesterday on the show. And the, the point that I was making yesterday is that Kanye has been like this always. And yet only when he endorses Trump, suddenly does he become a crazy person, according to the media. Right? So if you think freely, if you think in a way the media doesn't approve, then you are cast out and you are seen as something absolutely terrible. Right? Kim Kardashian continued to tweet along these lines. Um, and uh, and she, she you know, was backing her husband really to the fullest. She said, yesterday it was announced that Kanye had parted ways with some business people and media outlets made this about Kanye's mental health rather than just a simple business decision. So I'm glad he tweeted about the state of his company and all of the exciting things happening. So full-scale defense by Kim Kardashian of, of her husband, Kanye West, yesterday. And uh, there, there are four more of these, of these tweets, so let's go through them. She tweets, uh, he's a free thinker. Is that not allowed in America? Because some of his ideas differs from yours. You have to throw in the mental health card. It's just not fair. He's actually out of the sunken place when he's being himself, which is very expressive. Again, the sunken place is a reference to Jordan Peele's movie Get Out, which suggested that if you are a black man dating a white woman or interacting with nice white people, then you end up in the sunken place where you're essentially a slave to them, that they've enslaved you and taken over your body, which it's an idiotic idea. I was uh, Again, I think Get Out is a really, really troubling movie and the fact that so many people are willing to overlook the racial politics of the movie is astounding to me. The idea that Kanye West is in the sunken place now because he's, he's doing all this. This is, by the way, an idea that's being pushed by a lot of folks on the left. 